Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today I'm going to turn this 40 gallon breeder front opening vivarium into a bioactive enclosure for my three red sided garter snakes. All right, so if you've seen my recent unboxing, you know that this is a kit from the Bio Dude, Josh Halter, and the first step is to put in the Terra Firma, which is his bioactive substrate for um, situations where the, you don't want too much uh, moisture and you don't want too much dryness. He has different substrates for different levels of humidity and so on. I use the um, Terra Sahara in with our leopard gecko. I have several videos about that that you can check out if you want to. We've been using the Terra Sahara for a couple of years now in that enclosure and it works really well. So I wanted to try out his terra firma for our garter snakes. So one thing I wanted to point out, this background was falling down. And so I took a couple of pieces of cork bark and just kind of wedged them in there. So it's tied up against the back. I knew once we got the substrate in there, it would help support it. But I really wanted to get that, uh, staying there tightly partly because I don't want the garter snakes crawling back behind there that would be potentially disastrous and the next step is to mix in some water until it's damp this is carbon filtered water I'm gonna mix some of that in and then see how damp it is I don't want it to be soaking just want it to be somewhat damp And a garter snake set up long term, you want the surface of this substrate to be dry in most of the enclosure because they will have problems if they're constantly on damp substrate. They'll have skin issues and that kind of thing. But this is just the initial setup and I'm going to let the uh, substrate kind of cure a little bit for a few days until it's ready for the garter snakes before I actually put them in for that reason. For other reasons too. Uh, I want to make sure that the cleanup crew is in place and everything's working the way it should be and that the temperature and the hot spot has stabilized as well before I put them in. So, I think that is pretty close. I'm just going to put a little bit more water in. And then I'll probably add some water to the moist hide when I get there as well. There, I think that is pretty good for now. All right, I just poured some water into this bag to get this a little bit wet. Again, purified water to get this sphagnum moss a little bit wet. And I'm also going to Add the leaf litter. All right. So we're going to get some leaf litter in here. You can see. Looks like there's some oak in here as well as some other types of leaves. And it's always good to have a mix. I like to use a mix of leaves. I'm going to you know, get some of it mixed up into the substrate and leave some on the surface. I think that's it's always a good thing. And <coughs> put this on too. That is a lot of moss and some of this is still kind of wet, some of it's still kind of dry and that's okay. I'm going to put most of it over on the wet side because it's, it's going to be a little moister and cooler on this side. This is the cool side of the vivarium. And this, I don't know if you can see from where we are right now, but the heat lamps, this is going to be the hot spot right here. I've got a 100 watt uh, basking bulb, and then I've got a, a UVB bulb that are going to be concentrated in this area. So this is where the, the basking platform is going to be. And over here, I'm going to put the cool hide and so on. 
All right, so I'm going to mix some of this into the substrate a little bit more. I have some more that I'm going to use, but I'm going to add in. But for now, it's time to move on to the cork bark. I want to create kind of a, a nice basking platform that's going to be stable here, but also provides a hide underneath it. I think something maybe like that. We'll come back to it, kind of play around. And I was thinking it would be kind of fun to have sort of a raised area where the, where the plants are. You know, some of the plants are going to be back over here because that's where the, the most of the light is. And most of the plants I have are not going to do great over here because most of the plants are ferns. Maybe I can put the, uh, the snake plant over here. It would probably do fine on this side. But as far as the ferns go, they're going to do better where they can stay out of the heat. So I'm kind of thinking a raised area here, some of the soil and sphagnum moss might be kind of fun and, and add to sort of a terraced effect in the vivarium. So right now it's just sort of playing around. Hmm. Kind of wonder if something like that might be kind of cool. Maybe I could fill this partially with some moss. In one side, maybe something like that. And then they have a place that they can kind of crawl in on that side as well. Let's see. Hmm. You want to give them options and different places to hide. I also want to create one that sort of gives them an underground spot. They can kind of dig down in there. Maybe put some of this up here and dig that out. If they have a place to hide. I'm going to need a place for the water dish. I'm thinking maybe here would be a good place for the water dish. Let's see. So they've got some spots to hide in now here. And we've got a hiding spot over here and another one over here. Let's see. I'm thinking I might want to do something like that. That'll give them another hiding spot. How does that look? Hmm, that's not too bad. I think I kind of like that. A little better maybe maybe something like that now let's look at the plants so now I'm going to try to put this Korean rock fern back here behind the uh, cork bark I know it, it might be a little bit difficult to see for a second but I'm trying to make that possible here get it kind of wedged back there set back in the substrate well, that's not too bad how does that look i think that's okay all right let's let's position some other plants and as with all the other plants this is just biodude uh, terra um, firma substrate and this kind of fell apart but that's not going to be a problem these plants can do quite well uh, even after you know the roots are mostly removed from this little pup it doesn't matter it'll do fine as long as it they actually like to start out a little dry so I'm gonna try this one over here in the corner I think it's gonna be a good place for this one to uh, to, to be in the warmth they like a little bit of warmth it's gonna get some decent light still because this light is is a good uh, nice bright light so I think that'll be enough they're pretty tolerant of low light conditions so I think that's going to be totally fine for it don't want to waste any of this substrate I knew I wasn't going to be able to set this up for several days so shortly after getting all the plants and I just planted them up in some of the terra firma substrate We're playing around here this is a good good thing to do um, it's not necessarily good to move the plants around too much but we're gonna try this and I think it's a good idea um, it's not my wife Kelly was saying maybe we should put this fern here and I like that idea um, if I can keep it from getting in the caught in the door I might have to move some things around a little bit I don't know it's 
it's always a game playing around a little bit see what works so I'm gonna try this of course all of these plants are gonna grow and they're gonna send out offsets and that's going to be something we have to keep in mind um, and we're gonna have to trim some of them and all of those things so well, we'll see how this works I'm gonna just play with it I'm gonna try to get it kind of up right against the glass there kind of pack it in and then maybe put this back down there oh, that's not bad I kind of like that and then maybe we'll put these ferns up here this lemon button fern covers a lot of ground after a while I have uh, one of these in well I had one and then it kind of grew all over in my dart frog vivarium which is great you just have to kind of keep it under control and then this one I'm really excited about this bird's nest fern I'm trying to put it right back over here and it's going to get big so it will kind of be a showpiece plant I think back here and it'll send off pups too so we'll have ferns all over this place it'll be a ferny vivarium and over time I may need to move plants out of it and put different plants in and whatnot and that's you know part of the process but we'll see what it looks like and now this one I don't think is going to go there I need to figure out where to put this one Okay, I'm trying to think how I feel about that. I'm, I think I'm going to leave it like that for a little while and see how it goes. Uh, can always uh, play with it later. The new enclosure will be quite a contrast from this rather Spartan grow out enclosure. I'm really excited about it and I'm sure if the snakes knew about it, they would be too. I'd like to thank all our Patreon backers for helping to make this and so many other projects that we do at Aquarimax Pets a reality. If you'd like to join the Aquarimax Patreon team just for $1 a month, I'll put a link at the end of the description and you can check it out. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.